say today, this trip around the Aegean Islands in Greece has become a one fuel tank tour. If you have a look at our fuel usage, we're on 53%, which on a catamaran and in the med, what do they say about the med? It stands for motoring every day. Well, we've actually had the best run through here and today is no exception. This morning we implemented plan B. So the plan was we're going to get up and set our sails at anchor, which is something we've never ever done except for once. We've practiced it just the other day. So we're getting better at this sailing business and we want to put the main up whilst we're at anchor, pull up our anchor, turn onto the wind and set sail as soon as we possibly could turn off the engines. And our plan was to film all that, but we forgot, eh? <laughs> yeah, we did. It's we busy! Got up, we got so excited, we lifted the boat, we pulled up our anchor, you got us on our course, I rolled out the Genoa, bang, the engines went off, and we've been under sail the whole time. And we've since changed from the Genoa to the Jenica, and we're hammering along now. The Jenica's gone out now, but unfortunately we didn't. We didn't film any of it, sorry guys. Maybe next time. But we've got a 16 mile trip today. We've already done six. Um, so we've got 10, just over 10 to go. And like I said, our plan was sail, to sail from anchor to anchor. Well, I think we're going to achieve that. So we're not, we're, we're sailors done. We are. It's only taken us five years <laughs> to get the hang of this. Funnily enough, we used to have a five knot rule on our Lucia where if we were traveling at less than five knots, we would put the engines on and give up the sailing bit. Um, and part of that reason was because we were always in a hurry and traveling long distances under the Schengen. Uh, so we don't have that pressure here in Greece and Turkey. But the other big factor in that is this boat just travels faster and we don't feel the urge to put those engines on. We just keep sailing and she just sails beautifully. Since we crossed over to Greece, I reckon we've sailed probably 90% of our total miles covered. I agree, yeah. yeah, no worries at all. So back to what I was saying about Plan E, we're gonna head south to Santorini. Yeah, so Santorini is an interesting choice because not a lot of people take their sailing boats there. The most common way to go and visit Santorini for us cruisers is to leave your boat in Eos or one of the other islands and catch a fast ferry across to Santorini and then return to your boat after you've finished your visit. And that's because, you know, Santorini hasn't got the best of reputations for um, being able to anchor there. We've found that there are a couple of anchorages down there, one in particular that is reasonably good shelter from the Meltemi. So we're actually gonna go and give it a try and we'll let you know how it goes. I actually remember the first time we were there, I said that I would never take a boat down there <laughs> because it is ridiculously it's, crazy. It's but mayhem. We're, we're gonna give it a crack. Yeah. <laughs> Wish yeah. us luck. Yeah, we might need some luck. <laughs> Do we need furl love? Okay. Take me back to the sweet side. That's Polygandros in front of us. It's been a really quick trip. Had to go back to the Genoa. Had a beautiful run with the Jenica, but it just got a little bit windy. So we packed it up and out with the Genoa and we're still cranking along at eight knots as we speak. I can't complain. such a cracking start to the day. We're cruising along at eight knots. We've rolled out the Jenica because the conditions are just so sensational. We just hope that it stays like this all the way to Santorini. That would be an absolute dream. Oh, here. Oh the most enormous dolphin. He's huge. Woohoo! It's nice to have him along. What a beautiful start to the 
trip. With this magnificent big beast doing all the work for us today and doing it easily at the moment, the conditions are absolutely spot on for the Jenica today. Take me back to the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is going to be all right in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime And even if I have to wait till next year I don't care All I know is that I'll meet you there In the summertime Baby, in the summertime Take me back How many miles out are we, darling? It's been a great trip, hasn't it? It's been a cracker Baby, in the summertime And we've used no fuel. Zero fuel. And we're still doing 6.6 .6 knots. And we are right on the south side of Long yeah. Sea Reedy. We have boats absolutely everywhere. Yeah, there's boats all around us. And we've got a few in front of us now. Yeah. Probably need to monitor our wind down here. Yep, okay. Isn't that a sight though? Yeah, look at the black rock. Got another cat coming towards us. Okay. It shouldn't come as any surprise, but this is the most boat traffic we've seen in the whole of Greece in the couple of months that we've been here. And it's today, we have not seen a single boat. The whole 30 mile, we haven't seen a single boat, and bang, we've four just went straight past us, and we got, well, how many's over here? There's boats everywhere. They're coming towards us. They're coming from behind us. They're mostly day tripper boats. Doesn't look like there's too many cruisers like us down here. And I should just point out, we're the only one under sail. Yeah. All these boats here, they're all cats, by the way. We haven't seen a single mono. Yeah. And none of them are under sail. Check this house out here. Oh. And the colour of that. Oh, I know. Baby in the summertime. Baby in the summertime. Baby in the summertime. Game in here. Oh yeah. We're surrounded by boats and they're all going in different directions. days like today very often and there's a reason for that because it's all hands on bloody deck when it's blowing 25 knots apparent wind speed. And the other reason is we've had waves coming up over the boat and the camera gets wet. We've sort of settled into a bit of a pattern. We've got a 20 mile sail today. We've got 25 knots of apparent wind on our beam. Reef 2 in the main and about a tablecloth out the front on our Genoa. Waves I'd estimate at around about somewhere between two and three metres. As everyone says, you'll never ever pick that up on camera, but you should be able to see by the roll of the boat. But it's not always comfortable out here. No, we're so, being pounded and the waves are coming every four seconds. Oh, hang on. Oh, 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 hang on. Sorry, I just had to hang hide on. the camera from that. It's getting worse. Yeah. We get these gusts every now and again, and then the waves crash. Right, oh, that's enough. Camera's going away. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Here, but I grabbed the camera because this rock formation here looks fantastic. 
I posted a little message to all my Greek friends about churches and monasteries and why the hell they build and where they do. This one here has to win hands down in terms of location. Yeah, so the last couple of nights we've had 45 knots of breeze in here. Quite comfortable anchorage though. If you are looking for somewhere to get out of Meltemi in these parts of the world, it's a good little stopover. Not a lot here, but certainly comfortable enough to hide from the Meltemi. We've taken Reef 2 again today because we're expecting 25 knots of apparent. We're at two-thirds Genoa at the moment and we've been hitting eight knots. downstairs to get the log book and attempt to do a log in these lumpy conditions. It's blowing about 25 knots consistently outside, sometimes 30. We've probably got two to three meter waves. It's been blowing a Meltemi for the last four days. This is the last day of it and we were kind of hoping that it would start to settle down as we made this journey towards Astapalia. But at the minute, it's still very windy. And we're just sitting up there at the helm, watching the waves and watching how the boat handles it. We were just saying that this really is where a bigger boat really does come into its own because, oh, sorry, just got some water over the front. Uh, because if we're in our Lucia, it would be significantly more uncomfortable than the level of discomfort that we've got in this boat. So the boat's handling it really well. The Lucia would handle it as well. It wouldn't be a problem. It's just that this boat is pushing through it quicker, more boat speed. Uh, it means we get to Astapalia quicker. It's about a six or seven hour journey. So it's gonna be a long and lumpy day. Better get this log done. Happy is starting to look a fair way away now. Good. We want to get out of this washing machine. Well, we're all smiles this morning because we are in glorious Astapalia after that pretty windy, fairly hectic trip that we had here yesterday. It was about six hours of sea bashing. Uh, and oh, look, we absolutely feel like we've arrived in paradise because here today, the wind has calmed right down. It's just a gentle breeze. The anchorage last night was really calm and flat. So we had the best night's sleep we've had for two weeks because we've been in these very windy places. And today we're lucky enough to be going up to the Hora, the old town at Astapalia, where there's a fort up on the hill with a basilica, a church inside the fort grounds. It's just such a pretty place. We had a bit of a welcoming committee when we got here yesterday afternoon. We arrived and there were already two other Aussie boats here. We had a great night out last night and it's just feeling really good to be here after kind of, you know, we've been stuck. We've had a bit of downtime just waiting for that wind to stop blowing so severely and we've been stuck in anchorages with 50 knot winds blasting us and quite a lot of swell because the little island that we were on, Anafi, doesn't have a massive amount of protection. It's a very small island in the middle of quite a big open expanse of sea. So now, <laughs> this is us. It's just glorious. I think sometimes you've got to go through a bit of hell to really appreciate these moments. It just 
heightens your senses that bit more. We're so incredibly lucky to be able to visit these places by boat on our own timeline. And yes, we do have moments of discomfort, but all in all, when you arrive to a spectacular location like Astapalia, the butterfly island, because that's what the shape of it is, it's quite surreal. You just pinch yourself. Today, we're going up there to explore. Tied off to my Greek neighbour. I think there is fishing. Let's, let's hope he's not going fishing because if he is, we'll end up on the rocks. But I think we're good. <laughs> let's go to town. Uh, we're walking into town and Marita picked up a mate. It's like having a dog. It's followed us from all the We've way come down, from down there. <laughs> so it's, it's not a short funny. stroll. It's, it's a long way to town, puss. It's a long way. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Marita and a little puss cat. Don't worry about me, puss. <laughs> it is, it's like a dog. <laughs> oh, puss. Nah, I think that's it. Um, God damn, I've forgotten where we are now. Astapalia. So we're here on Astapalia. We've just climbed from the other side of the Hora up to the Hora and now, now come back down into the port side of the Hora. And on our way over, I noticed a car park full of electric vehicle parking stations. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird for a, an island the size of Astapalia. I don't know how many people live here, but it would only be a couple of thousand. Get down here though and check these vehicles out. They are state-of-the-art electric vehicles and their logo for the island is Smart and Sustainable Island. I reckon that is a cracking idea for a place like Astapalia. And by the way, it is stunning. Put it on your list. Oh my goodness, this town. Oh, we say it all the time, but seriously, this is one of the best horrors we've been to. This is gorgeous. Around every corner, it's so sweet, so unspoilt by tourism. <laughs> this guy is repairing his front door. No paint. Here. This will look very, very nice. This will look nice. Yeah. Where does it come from? Australia. Australia. Yeah. Oh, in like Australia. Oh, very beautiful. You have lots of work ahead of you. A lot of work, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna move the donkey so we can get through. <laughs> can we come? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of renovation going on here. I heard Michael say wow. <laughs> and it is, it's a wow around every single corner. Now we're in this very narrow alley. This horror is very authentic. Oh, the Greek architecture here is sublime.
Gotta watch my step here, but this is the castle on the top of the hill in Astapalia, built in 1413, and then somewhere in later centuries they came along and added this Christian church right in the grounds it's, of the castle. It's obviously under reconstruction. All these yeah. blocks over here, they're, I think they're just renovating it. Yeah, slowly but surely. No entry fee, like so many of these places. You just rock up and help yourself. Oh, look at that. That's our boat down there in the bay. And that's what's so special about cruising around these locations by boat. It just gives you access to so much of the world in such a unique way. Astapalia this morning. As you can see we've got the big girl out, the Jenica. We've been blessed with 11 knots just off our beam. We're sailing with our Jenica and main fully out and it doesn't get much better than this guys. We put the Elba through her paces this season. Mel Temi winds blowing 35 knots. We've had three metre seas. She's handled it beautifully. Even conditions like today, we're doing high sixes, seven knots, and absolutely loving this boat. Thirty minutes ago, we were saying how lucky we are that we've managed to cross cargo ship highway without having to dodge and weave a ship like this fella out in front of us. I've just tried to call him because we were on a collision course a minute ago. As per usual, he didn't want to talk to us, but he's going to cross around about 0.3 nautical mile ahead of us now anyway. It's looking better than it was about five, ten minutes ago. And of course, we're under sail, so we don't really want to adjust our course if we don't have to. I don't want to be too much closer than that, but... No. We could see these fish jumping. They've been jumping all around us for half an hour and we're like, why aren't they on our lines? One of them's just jumped on and Michael is bringing him in. I don't think we should get too excited. He's not real big. Oh, look, we haven't had a fish all summer, so we'll settle for anything at this point in time. You want to pull that other line in? Don't yeah. You? He's not the biggest fish we've ever caught, but he's... Oh, he's worth keeping. Ooh, fish in the boat. Sushi out of me. Yeah, that's what we're having for dinner. We're a bit short on food at the moment. We haven't been to a supermarket for a while. I see you calling. Fresh tuna steaks for dinner. Fantastic. It's five in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Barbecue seared tuna on a white bean puree with, ooh, what would you call that? Sun dried tomato and herb salsa verde, roasted potatoes and roasted carrots. Bon appetit. Well, if we go to the town key, we don't have to get the dinghy down. This is so pretty, so colourful. We're coming into this little town at Halki, the island of Halki, it's a little bit like Simi. Oh, three windmills up on the hill there. All the colors of these beautiful Greek cottages. Oh, it's so nice. Stunning little place. And look at the color of this water. Some are going to be staying, staying.
This morning we've left the colourful little town of Halki behind us and we've come across to Alimni. Somebody recommended this place to us several years ago and we've never really had the right opportunity to come here but today there's no wind so we're kind of killing time and it was a perfect opportunity just to motor over from Halki and see what is quite a unique thing here. There's a number of World War II buildings here. There were German soldiers stationed here one particular soldier, a bit of an artist, has painted pictures of his home and you know lifestyle pictures of what it's like back home. I think he must have just been dreaming about going home and not being stuck on a tiny island. Well apparently there wasn't much war action here so maybe he just had a bit too much time on his hands and he decided to create some paintings. After we get the boat anchored in this beautiful bay here, we'll go and have a look at the paintings. Shall I go and prepare the anchor, love? somewhere to tie the dinghy. Well, I think it's safe to say that that German soldier was dreaming of his hometown. Oh, it's a very lonely bay. It's extremely quiet here. I don't know how long these German soldiers were here for, but if it was for any length of time, there is absolutely no signs of life here except us and a whole swarm of bees. Cause you take me home and I'm dying. 